Hello everybody, I am Nico D and this is Armbian Jammy with the KDE Neon Desktop. So this is on the Raspberry Pi 5 and this runs really great. So we have been working the last weeks on improving this image and yesterday we have released a new image that fixes a few bugs. So now this image really is awesome, it really looks awesome, I really love it. So let me show you NeoFetch, here is NeoFetch and here is Helix Info. So we are using the Broadcom V3D GPU driver and we are on the Raspberry Pi 5 Model B. And here let me show you about this system. So KDE Plasma version 6.0.4 on Waylands. So this is really awesome. So in this video I'm going to show you how to install this image. I'm going to show you a few tricks and tips to work with it. And I'm also going to show you a few other desktops that are possible with Armbian. So first of all, what is Armbian? So Armbian is a Linux distribution that provides Linux images for ARM single board computers. So let me go to Armbian here. and to download and there you see Armbian supports a lot of boards but even a lot more that are not supported. So here is the Raspberry Pi 5 so let's go in there. So here we have got the Jamie Gnome and the KDE Neon desktop. So this is the image that I am using now from April 2nd 2024. And here are the other images, so there is also Armbian Bookworm with Cinnamon, Gnome, Minimal, XFCE and Armbian Jammy with Cinnamon, i3WM, KDE Plasma, Minimal and XFCE. The KDE Plasma desktop didn't work that well, but this one works a lot better. So there is also Armbian with Home Assistant, OpenHub and Armbian with Kali Linux applications. And if we go down, completely down. Then there is Armbian Trixie, this is Debian rolling release. So let's download this image, Armbian Jami KDE Neon. And once downloaded, I write it to my SD card. So here on Linux, I use GNOME Disk Utility for that. There are other tools to do that. On Windows, you can use Balina Etcher for that. So to open it I type gnome-discs, I select my SD card reader, I remove the partitions and I select the correct image, so restore disk image. And here it is. So once the image is written to the SD card, I shut down the system. I take out the SD card that's in it and I plug in the new SD card. And I boot it up by pressing the power button. And here is the initial setup. So the first thing we need to do is create a new root password. So two times type a password for the root account. Do know that the keyboard is QWERTY US when you type a password. I have got an Azerty keyboard for example, so I have to think about it. Then we choose bash or zsh, I choose bash, my username is nicod, two times a password, nicod, I will connect via Wi-Fi. I select no for set user language based on your location, because I don't want it to be in Dutch, I want it to be in English, so I choose 89 for English Great Britain. Then I choose 7 for Europe and 6 for Belgium.
and here we are at the login screen of KDE. So type my password and I can log in for the first time. Again, I am forgetting that I am using QWERTY on Azerty. And here we are. So this is a very nice desktop. I also like the background picture. It is simple, but very nice. It brightens up the day. So the first thing I will have to do is change my keyboard. So I open console. So I do sudo ambient config. I go to personal keyboards and there I set it to Belgium. And I do the same for my desktop. So I go to settings, their keyboards. Belgian. And now I have got the correct keyboard. So the first thing I do is sudo apt update. But since these images are brand new, there is nothing to update. So let's take a look at the programs that are installed. So there isn't that much. So graphics, there isn't GIMP, internet, there is no browser. Multimedia doesn't have VLC or MPV, no office. So we will install all these things. So let's start to install a few programs. So sudo apt install. GNOME, Disk Utility, MPV, VLC, Genie, though Genie doesn't work that great on here, GIMP. Let's start with that. So I forgot about LibreOffice, so install LibreOffice, so do I have to install LibreOffice. And now we need a browser. So this is kind of a problem on Ubuntu, but we have a fix for that later on. So first, if we want to install sudo apt install chromium browser, it says that it is already the newest version, but there is no version for chromium in apt. So if we want to open it, chromium browser, it says you have to install it with snap, but the snap version of chromium isn't that good. But let's install it, so snap install chromium. This takes a while. So I let that install and after 5 minutes my display falls out, so it goes to the login screen. So I will show you how to disable that. It should be easy, but there is something you should know about it. So, so now Chromium is installed, so let's open it, type Chromium. And there is also an icon on my taskbar. So now let's change that it goes out after 5 minutes. So we go to energy saving, there we disable this, but there is something else that we have to do. Screen unlocking. So I have to go to screen unlocking. There are a lot of settings to choose from, maybe a bit too much. And here I have to disable this. So there are two programs that work against each other. So if we disable them both, then it doesn't go out after five minutes. So now let's show you Chromium. So it isn't that good as I said. So let's go to the web here, Aquarium. As you see, this isn't very good. This isn't accelerated. And let's open a YouTube video from NicoD. This is also not accelerated, but for the Raspberry Pi, we don't have much better for Ubuntu right now. So it can play 1080p fine. It can even play 1440p fine. 
but it cannot do 4K. So one problem I've got here is my capture device doesn't capture the sound, but the sound does work, so HDMI sound does work. So as you see, this plays video pretty well. So I told you there is something better than Chromium that we could use, and that is Torium. So I searched for Torium Raspberry Pi on Google. There the second Torium browser, go down, and there are the links to Raspberry Pi. And here we can download it. So we need the ARM64 DEP. So let's download this. I am on another desktop over here. I am on XFCE4. I forgot to shoot this part. And I already formatted the SD card with XFCE4. So I show it in XFCE4 here. But it is the same in every desktop. So once it is downloaded, I need to install fonts liberation. So sudo apt install fonts liberation. And after that we can install the dep package. So sudo dpkg-i for install and torium browser the version dot dep. After that it is installed. Once that is installed, we have a better browser. So let's do the WebGL again. And this is accelerated. This looks a lot better than it was on Chromium. So now we have got WebGL acceleration. The video playback isn't better, but it is a nicer experience. So now let's do a 7-zip benchmark to see how it performs. So of course we can overclock this like with any other Raspberry Pi operating system. So right now it performs about 12,400 in decompression or even 12,734 in decompression. So to overclock it we type sudo and then our favorite text editor for me that is genie. So slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt. There we add over voltage delta equals 50,000. Arm frequency 3000. GPU frequency 1100. For me this is stable. For you this might not be stable. So lower it when it is not stable. And let's first install SuperTux card so I can show you the GPU performance. So this is about 17 frames a second. So now let's reboot and see how the overclock does. So now with 7-zip instead of 12,000 we get 15,000. So that is a huge increase in CPU performance. And now let's run SuperTux cards. And this went from 17 frames maximum to 19 frames. So 2 frames more. It isn't much, but every little bit counts. Do know this will consume a lot more. So mine consumes 3.5 watts more when it is overclocked versus normal. So 13 watts overclocked. And normal it goes to 9.5 watts. 
So now as last let me show you some other desktops. So this is the default XFCE4 desktop. So this is very simple. I like to make it look more like the Mati desktop with two panels. Then here is the default GNOME desktop. And here is the Cinnamon desktop. So that will be it for today. So KDE Neon is really awesome on ARM and Jammy. You can run it on other SBCs. But I wanted to show it on the Raspberry Pi 5 here in this video. So you can also build your own Armbian images. Watch my video build your own Armbian images. I must thank Igor and Cornelius for helping me fix some bugs. I had some issues and now everything is fixed. We have fresh images so I am a very happy man. So thank you all for watching, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, see you all later, bye!